Not everybody has the time or money to have a full-on paint job on your newly acquired camper or your project camper. You might just want to touch in a bumper or a grill or a door handle, or you might want to go full bore and completely change the look of your camper. My name's Lee, this is Coon Valley Campers, and today we're at the Raptor training facility showing you how to use Raptor to paint your camper. Today we're in Wellingborough, Northamptonshire, the home of Raptor Paint with Jason. Thanks so much for inviting us up well, here Welcome Lee, no problem at all. Really appreciate it. Um, you've invited us up to do some training on Raptor and we're gonna actually be painting a piece of our equipment with it, um, with the Raptor Paint. Can you tell us quickly what it is and what we're gonna be doing for the next couple of days? Right, certainly. So Raptor is a two-part polyurethane protective coating. Okay, and what it delivers is uh, a wide range of textures and colours that are suitable for the camper conversion um, the market, as long with the 4x4, industrial, marine, agricultural. But today, our purpose with you guys is to go through preparation steps, because preparation is vital. Yep. This is where things fall down. And we're going to go through the individual products, because we have Raptor from preparation to finish and everything in between. So hopefully after today's show and tell, we're gonna be showing you different textures, different colors, we're gonna go through why Rapture is so great. Mm -hmm. And hopefully then you can take that away to your customer base and expand on that. Brilliant. So I think first things first, being that we're coming out of COVID, but we're also in an industrial facility, let's get some PPE on. Let's get some PPE on and let's get cracking. Suit up. So the piece of kit we've got today to paint and to basically learn on is this T3 bus front. Now you may have seen this before on, or in the background of some of our shoots, or if you've been to see us at any of the shows we did, crikey, last time we did a show was 2019. So um, if you've seen this before, this was part of our trade standard shows. We put a flat screen TV on here, display uh, previous videos that we've done but it was always a bit of a cumbersome item because you literally chopped it off the of front of a bus and kept it. But we've sent it over to Ben Woods, who is our local genius fabricator, and he has put it on a diet and put it on a set of casters as well. So it's really light now. It's all got aluminum shells so we can keep everything on it. And uh, yeah, most of the substructure has been cut out, so it's actually light enough to lift in and out of the vehicle and light enough to just wheel around as well. So next job is to strip this down. We're then going to go through all the stages of paint preparation. And what's good about this is we've got all different manner of materials to show you how to paint with, with Raptor paint. We've got um, metal work or steel with existing paint on. We've got bare aluminium plastics um, on the bumpers, end caps and the grill and we've got your steel front heavy gauge uh, heavy gauge steel front bumper there as well. So without further ado I think we'll get down and strip it down. Everything's stripped off now. 
we're ready to start the prep, but we've got a simple test to do first because this has got all manner of paints and substances on it. So what's, what's the first stage we've got to do? So the first, the first stage of this is to understand the substrates that we've got mixed up. So we've got some bare aluminium here and we've got some steel down the bottom. We know they're fine. They're gonna need some preparation in terms of abrasion and cleaning and then the primers on it. It's this white paint we're concerned about. We need to make sure that the white paint is not gonna react with the new paint. Okay. As, as Raptor and the new paints are quite high in solvents, um, if we're going on to single stage paints, um, some synthetics and certainly some household paints, if they're not stable, then they could wrinkle your top coat because the mm -hmm. solvents from the top coat can attack this old paint yeah. and make it go soft. And then it will just make a really poor paint finish. The simple way to test that is to take some thinners. This is high in solvents. We're gonna douse a rag. We're gonna lay it on there for a few seconds, 10 or 20 seconds, rub it around, and we're gonna see if we make, make that soft and we can bring it back up again. Okay. If that happens, we need to sand it off and we start from a sound substrate. Brilliant, and so, so if we're doing this from home, this is available anywhere, a standard thinners? Standard, or? standard automotive thinners, any automotive shop, any yeah. automotive distribution, yeah, and even white spirits will give the same effect. Uh -huh. It's just to see if you're re-softening the paintwork that's there already. Brilliant, and as okay. you said, preparation is key. Always. First stage of that is Always. testing what's on it. Yep, exactly. Cool, let's do it. As you can see, then we're just gonna lay it onto a an area here and we just let that solvent soak into the paintwork and if that paint is going to absorb and then start to what we call rework the paint, make that paint soft again, uh -huh. and then we're going to have to look at a, another preparation step which will probably just be removing the paint yep. with a sander. I'm quite fortunate there's not a massive amount of painted bodywork on it. It's not over painted. So as you can see, the paintwork is going quite soft. See how I'm moving up with my nail? Yep. If we all we done was to sand that top uh, area and then to paint Raptor on top, that would go soft and it would cause a wrinkling effect. Uh -huh. So the Raptor will wrinkle, it'll look like mud cracking. So what we need to do on this is actually give it a clean first, get the DA sander on there and take all of this household white paint off. Perfect. Okay, and then we've got a sound substrate to paint on. Preparation is key. As you can see, we started to remove the paint. That's from solvent. Not solvent. an ideal surface for painting on then. No. Okay. If you just go straight on now with a sander, yeah. all right, the dirt that you've got, you can actually start to impregnate the paintwork underneath the sound paintwork. Gotcha. You don't want to be pushing dirt into anything. You want to take it off first. Okay. And then that's, that's the idea of first we degrease, yep. then we sand, then we degrease again. Perfect. All right. difference that's made you know we've spent what maybe an hour Jason an hour, yeah. three of us on there we started with an 80 grit on the DA's just taking off that what we think is like an emulsion paint yeah. down to what you call a good substantial layer that's not gonna be affected by the Raptor paint we then went in with the red um, Scotch Bright that got in all the finer details and then we were using um, the fine finger sander as well, just to get in every every sort of nook and cranny. Exactly. So yeah. next stage is blowing it down. The so next stage now, we're gonna blow it down, see where we are. We'll give it another wipe over with the degreaser. Yeah. We'll probably need to go back to it in individual parts just to see the little bits that we've missed. Mm -hmm. We'll get rid of those, and then we'll start looking at the metal work that we're gonna sand up ready for priming. Right, so where we are now, 
is that we've done a substantial amount of sand in here. We've took off that white emulsion coat. We've come back down to, this is a spray filler that's on there, which is sound. The solvents of the Raptor will not attack it. We've keyed it up nicely, so we're gonna have really good adhesion for our primer and then our Raptor on top. It's just these little areas here that we can still see where the white speckles are. We're gonna to need to get back in there now with that red scotch. It just makes sure we can take that off on there so it's nice and clean. And on these returns in here as well, we're just gonna get our fingers in there with the scotch and try and get as much of this white off as we possibly can. And what that will do is it will negate any problems. I can assure you, you don't wanna spend this much time doing this and not finish off the finer parts. Take it to paint and then you get a reaction because then you're back to square one again. So prep, prep, prep. Just been making some decisions about how we're gonna paint this now. Obviously we've got this um, original bodywork section and we've got the, the new alley shelves that uh, Ben Woods made. And we're just trying to decide colors and textures and what we're gonna do. Before we reveal what we're gonna do in colors, we're just gonna prep this area first. So um, we're gonna DA the top, is that right? DA with a 180, yeah. nice scratch pattern. And then this section down here, which is a mixture of steel and alley plate, I'm just gonna go over with scotch. Nice not... red scotch to get, again, to get a key, dollar yeah. paint down and take away any flaky paint. And then we can go into what we're gonna to do to prep this area, bearing in mind we've got areas we wanna fill a little bit, we've got some areas that might be a little bit rusty, some bare metal, and we'll go over that before we actually start laying any color down. Perfect. Lovely, let's do it. Wiped it over again with a solvent degreaser and dried it off. The final preparation step prior to paint is tacking. So this impregnated cloth, uh, the best way to describe it is a sticky duster. We open it up and we just run gently over the surface. This will pick up any of those loose particles that the blower didn't blow off so it doesn't damage the paintwork. Okay, so this is what we're just going to do. We open it up. Fold it over into a cloth, take it to the substrate, literally awesome progress so far. We've had an assessment of what we've got, we've keyed it or sanded all the layers of paint on, then we've prepped the aluminium, cleaned it, cleaned it, cleaned it again, then masked off, then papered cleaned again, now we're ready to lay primer on. We are indeed. So one of the key things we've done really are the preparation steps. Yep. We don't get them right, it doesn't matter what paint you've got, it just won't stick. Yep. Okay, so what we've got in there, we've got quite a lot of exposed bare metal, aluminium, some steels in there as well. So in terms of priming, there's, there's two or three ways you can go. So I'm just gonna show you this one here. This is a single pack edge primer. And this is ideal for little areas, exposed bare metal. So imagine you're sanding down your paintwork and your DA or your sander on your hand exposes that metal 
pretty much nothing bigger than an A4 piece of paper. Oh, okay, so you just rub through. And you've you've just rub through. Yeah. This prime is pretty good, you know, yeah. it's, very, it's very good. Two coats of this will give you an anti-corrosive barrier and give you adhesion to your next layer yeah. of paint. But as the size we've got in there, we want to do the whole area. We're going to move away from this aerosol can and we're going to move on to what we call a two pack epoxy primer. Okay, so this is our two pack epoxy primer. What's the difference between an epoxy and an etch? First of all, this is two, two parts, one part hardener, one part primer. It's a chemical reaction that gives it its cure. Yeah. The difference between epoxies and a single pack etch are corrosion resistance. So the corrosion resistance against bare metal of epoxies is far superior than single okay. pack etches. Um, it also gives you a higher build, so we're going to sort of straighten out a little bit of that imperfection that's on there. And it also gives you a very sound platform for the Raptor to stick to. Yeah. Okay, so epoxies, in my opinion and in our opinion, for large area bare metal work is the way to go. So we're going to use this 4 to 1 out of the tin. Now for smaller areas, we do have the, the two part aerosol can. These are quite convenient if you do not have a spray gun. You know, you've not got access to a compressor, but you still want to use the quality of a two-pack epoxy paint. So the aerosols are a nice option. Yeah. Okay, but in this instance, we've got the booth, we've got the airline, so we're going to mix up our four to one primer, and then we're going to put it through the spray gun, and we're going to shoot two coats. Proper job. Yeah. Super, okay, well, and the mixture is, it doesn't matter what size you've got in terms of, uh, you know, quantity, it's a four to one, yep. is that right? Four parts primer, one part hardener. Four parts primer, one part. You can dilute it, so if you want it to lay on a little bit thinner, you can use standard thinners, automotive thinners, epoxy thinners, and I'd recommend up to 5%, okay. no more than that. Okay, we're gonna mix it up four to one, and we're gonna shoot it through a 1.6 spray gun. Can't wait to see that all in one color, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Really good. Okay, awesome, great stuff. Yeah, that's a nice grey colour. So we took it up to 400 millilitres. What we're going to do is we're going to put 100 millilitres of hardener in there. And that will give us a balanced mixture. So again, epoxy primers, their strength is their anti-corrosive property and their adhesion to steels and to aluminium. They're very, very good. So that's in there now. The next thing we're going to do is just going to get a little mixing stick. We're going to give it a mixer. Then we're going to pass it into the spray can. So for all sorts of health and safety reasons and breathing apparatus, we're not going to be allowed in the booth. But Jason's in there, all prepped. He's got the gun filled with um, the epoxy primer. The front has been cleaned within an inch of his life. And yeah, he's just gonna make a start, so enjoy. One element of what we're doing today is probably going to be more important than anything else we're doing, which is treating plastic and metal bumpers. Now, those of you who are maybe Type 25 owners, T3 owners, or T4 or T5 owners, and want to get your bumpers maybe back to black, but give them some durability and some UV coating at the same time, this is what's going to really apply to you. Um, we're very fortunate in this type of bumper that, A, it's a bit beaten up, so we can prep it, and you'll be able to see just by me doing that how beaten up this thing is. You know, it's obviously been filled, it's got a bit of a rust hole, and we're not gonna treat all of it, we're not gonna restore this bumper. We're gonna paint it with a heavy texture, so we'll be able to show you how many sins that heavy texture will, will hide. So, you've got a choice, you can maybe replace your bumper for a new one that might be thinner, not as good quality as the original bumpers, or you can spend your money instead on 
painted them in Raptor and get a cool finish and make them durable. And we're going to treat the plastic slightly differently. Again, this is a perfect example because it's a bit beaten up and it's already had a coat of paint on it. We're going to treat that in a certain way and give that a really cool finish as well. So, on with it. So, right, as you can see, we're on to preparing this metal bumper. Uh, before we do anything, we need to make sure we're taking off any glues or any overtake, sticky backing tape. Obviously, something like this, I can see probably the number plate's been put on there, for example, and you've got that gluey backing tape. So we've just taken a nice sharp metal applicator and we're just going to remove that first of all. Again, preparation is key, it doesn't take too long. We're just making sure we get rid of all of that fur and all of that glue. There we go. So now we're pretty much ready to give it a degrease with some solvent degreaser. That will re soften what's left on there. We can wipe that off and then we're good to give it that solvent test again to see what sort of paint we've got on there. And that will let us know what level of abrasion and uh, sand that we need to get to. There we go. When you order Raptor, at the moment, it's available in a black finish, a white finish, and a tintable finish. So when it gets delivered to you, or when you buy it, you'll have it in a box like this, and you'll get four bottles of the actual paint itself. You will get a tin of the hardener, and a measuring cup as well. Now, unlike the primer, this paint mixture is a three to one and it'll measure this all out and it's all in the instructions for you. But basically in the bottle is 750 ml, is that right? 731. 731. Yeah. And then you fill up with hardener up to this point here and tip that in the bottle, give it a shake and paint. However, I'm going a bit too into it like that at the moment. What I'm getting to is we're going to be using the tintable Raptor on the main body of our bus front. Um, that's the point. This is the tintable here. Um, and when you pour it out of the bottle, it kind of looks like a yogurt type color. Um, and we're gonna be tinting it today in our chosen color. Now, if you were to send your vehicle to the body shop, for example, or if you're doing it at home, you will get your tintable version and then you can tint it to whatever color is existing or whatever color your vehicle is, right? Yes, sir. And what sort of paint will I need to get to tint in and what sort of ratio? So the, fir the first thing to remember is we're working with a solvent system. Yeah. So the, the paint that's gonna go inside your tintable needs to have a solvent background, right? So if we're talking automotive, we're going to be solvent board base coats, for example, that they will put on the vehicle and then lacquer over the top. That will tint your Raptor. Okay. And then base coats come in the RAL colours and the automotive colours of your choice. So you can normally find your car colour on a plate or maybe on your... Um, oh, like on the sticker under the dash. Yeah, or yeah exactly, yeah. yeah. So you can use that. You can use um, Direct Gloss, which is a 2K product. So these, these are normally used on your vans, on your white vans, on your black vans. Again, so they're quite high in gloss levels. They're a two pack, so you need to activate that first mm -hmm. and then add that to your Raptor okay. and then activate your Raptor. You can also use pigment pastes. Now these are quite strong and very powerful. Yeah. You can get these from marine industrial suppliers because they use them for their gel coats, for etc. Yeah. So polyester uh, pastes are very, very good. We're gonna use one today. So we've got a nice flame red. Can't wait, it's... it's probably the brightest colour oh, and I've squished it with my box, that's a bit of a pain. Um, there we go, <laughs> kind of messed that up a little bit there but yes, so we've got, no no carry on, 
<laughs> so we got, you can see the nice flame red here. That I've made a complete mess of. I'm so sorry. just before, I'm just going to show you how well it takes into the Raptor. A couple of little drops. This is a marine pigment, solvent based. Drop that around there. Yeah. So give yourself this here, a little stick. So literally 10% of the volume. So this is, the marine pigments are very, very strong in pigmentation, so you don't need so much of it. Base coats, because you may be having metallics in there, they're a little bit thinner in consistency, so that's when you may need your 10% maximum in there. Again, you can tint with any tint, as long as it's a solvent-borne system. So you go down to your local automotive distributor, and they can mix up your requirement. If you've got your car uh, color code, for example, yeah. you say, I need a flame red in X, Y, and Z, need 200 mil they'll make it up you bring it back and then you tint your tintable raptor that way perfect and then on top of that you harden and away you go brilliant so bit <laughs> bit put off now because i've got it everywhere but what we're going to do now we're going to mix up a batch of this red in the quantity we need to do the front of our bus and uh, i think the next shots you are going to see is actually laying the colour on and we can go into the texture we're going to later. Should yeah. we do that? We can do that, we can do that, yeah. Super. See you in a bit. So now we're ready to put the colour onto the primer. This epoxy primer works in two ways. It works as a wet on wet, which means you can leave it between one hour after the final coat and up to seven days with no abrasion needed. If in that time you feel like you need to abrade or you've left it longer, and then you can just rub it down with a 240 grit paper or a red scotch and then you can apply your top coat on top of that. As you've seen on the video then, we've laid down the first couple of coats of the flame red. Um, now what we're going to be doing is laying the texture on. We are indeed. And one of the beauties of this paint is the different types of texture you can get. And basically what we're looking at is this really tough sort of texture. Obviously you can lay it down in a nice smooth finish, but we're after this durable textured finish. And there's a couple of ways you can achieve that. Um, and it's by the gun or coming from a gun or you can actually use some hand tools but we'll go into that yeah, tomorrow mm -hmm. or later in the video um, and if you could just explain about what we're going to achieve now with these guns and how these two guns make a okay, difference definitely awesome. Awesome. so the first thing is the, the, the flat coat that we laid down in there was the mixture of the raptor and the color with its hardener, but actually we diluted that by 15% and put it through a HVLP gun. Mm -hmm. And that was at a 1.6 millimeter orifice. So that, that allowed the, the paint to atomize and go down nice and flat. Yep. That's put that nice, real good color coat down over the gray primer. Now we can start talking about texture. Yep. So these two guns here, they look similar, but they are different. This one is what we call a standard underbody Schutz gun. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can see, it's got a six mil bore at the end. Okay, how it delivers the paint, it's a venturi effect, so the air passes through, sucks the paint up from the pot and spits it out. Sure. That's as crude as it is. Yeah. Now how do you create your different textures by doing that? It's all about air pressure delivered to the gun. Okay. So the higher the air pressure, the smaller the droplet, the finer the texture. The lower the air pressure, the bigger the droplet, the bigger the texture. That's one way with this gun. The other way is by speed of hand. Mm -hmm. You know, the faster you move, you lay it on, it's a bit more separated and it is joined together. And then the other side is further away. So if you're further away, 
or if you're closer to the panel, you can achieve different textures that way. Kind so, of experimenting, you can achieve those. So my parts. advice would be if you're, you know, you, you're not familiar with paint, you're not familiar with Raptor for the first time, is to grab yourself a litre bottle, you know, mix it up, get yourself one of these guns, get a nice big piece of cardboard, and just play about with the different textures at the different speeds mm -hmm. to achieve the texture that you wish. Yeah. Now there are key elements that we're going to talk about later in this video about when you should apply the texture and why it's important to let that flash off coat happen. Mm -hmm. So in between coats it should be 45 to 60 minutes. That's important to achieve that texture, we'll go into that. But this is that standard 6mm bore shotgun, or Schutz gun, Schutz gun. not shotgun. <laughs> but this, like I said, speed of hand, air pressure, distance, different textures. Cool. This one is called a variable nozzle gun. So is that your so, Citroen and your BMW? Exactly, right, okay, exactly. Yeah. So this one, same thing, Venturi effect, it sucks the paint up, air goes across, spits it out. So everything that this gun, that gun does, this gun does, but you can adjust the size of the nozzle at the end. Sure. So you can now wind this down to around about a 1.5, 2 mil, and all the way open to something like a 7 mil, 8 mil, larger, 9 mil. So this is very, very nice to be able to create that nice, fine, medium texture. Easy control, you get a slight fan off this one, where that one there is just like a bullet, bullet bore. You can lock this into place, so by opening up your valve, so it opens up the hole at the end, and you yeah. can lock that into place, so you can achieve a constant texture uh -huh. all the time, or you can close it up by loosening, winding it in, and the hole tightens up. And again, same thing, you can adjust your air pressure, you can adjust your distance and speed, and you can play with this. And we're gonna be experimenting on our piece with different textures and with different colors. Yeah. Um, so our metal bumper, for example, we're gonna lay a real heavy texture down. The actual body itself is gonna be a nice medium texture, and then we're gonna go for a more factory application on the plastic parts like the bum bumper and caps and grill. Yeah, I do. Um, and we'll be able to show you all of those with these different applications. Um, and the tintable paint. So we've already mixed that up, and that's, I don't think we've actually covered that. Um, with this paint, I showed you earlier, the box of paint, you get the hardener in the bottles. This is as simple as it is. You mix your paint in this bottle, put your Schutz gun in the bottle, and spray paint straight on. It's that it's easy, simple, really, isn't it? And you can just lay it straight on for this bottle, but with the texture we're going for, we've laid on the gravity flat coat first. Yeah. So this, this bottle here, this is a tintable version, and as you can see, we've already tinted it for it with the flame red. Okay, so all we're going to do now is add the hardener to this bottle to activate. Once we've added the hardener to this bottle and we've shook it in, you've got 60 minutes pot life before it starts to thicken too much and we can't use it. Uh -huh. Okay, so nicely designed cup there with a line showing you where to put the hardener. Eight fluid ounces Eight or fluid ounces. 237 mil. 237 mil. Take it to the line. then pour the hardener measured correctly into said bottle of flame red raptor. Looks so good. We then put the lid, we give it a two minute shake, we attach to the gun and we shoot. So the little strap line that Raptor has and has had since it came out is fill, shake and shoot. Perfect. It's as simple as that. So enjoy it while he shakes that bottle for a little bit and then we'll go and lay on the flame red texture. Now the main bus front is finished, it's in the booth over there, it's all in paint and it looks absolutely stunning. It's been curing overnight. Now what we're going on to is the parts that we're gonna be painting black, namely the front bumper, the bumper end caps, and the front grill. Now this is a really good opportunity to show how we're gonna paint on this metal part with some aerosols, but we'll go into that later, and also how we're going to basically restore these plastics um, without knowing it, we couldn't have got better examples to show you about what products we're gonna use because these bumper end caps have already been painted. 
The grill's already been painted. The grill we've already keyed up, that's ready to go. But what we do have to do is just repair a crack in it. So we're gonna, again, we're gonna be using some products on that in a second, just down here. Um, and then we're just gonna be sanding this and then we'll show you what sort of plastic primers or adhesion promoters we're gonna be using on this before we apply the primer. Uh, sorry, apply the Raptor. Um, this bumper itself is absolutely hammered. We didn't realize how bad it was, but you can tell by the footage that it took quite a few sanding this to get this how it looks. And doing the sanding, we found some holes, um, but we've since filled them. So it's all going well. Like I say, we're gonna get sanding on it now, and if there's any bits and pieces um, that need further explaining, we'll bring Jason in and we'll go from there. So what we've got, we've got a crack, stress crack here in the plastic. We're gonna repair it from behind. So we're gonna take all of this um, old glue off, create a little V, then we're gonna fill it with some plastic molded, uh, bonding compound. But the crack will always continue to creep unless you've secured it or made that stronger at the end. So by putting a hole about two millimeters away from the end of the crack, the bonding material will go into there as well and it strengthens it. It will stop that crack from creeping. Exciting next stage now, we've got everything that we need to be painting in one colour, all in the booth, prepped, cleaned and ready to go. All the bits that are left to do are going to be in Raptor Black, that's the same stuff that comes in one bottle, so that's the fill, the shake and the shoot. Um, but before we do anything, we're just going to key this up with um, the 2K primer in a can. Now this is a, a can that you activate, but we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Out the booth, well, all this is curing. So yeah, we're gonna coat this in the 2K primer. Then this piece, we've masked off the rest of the front of the bus. The primer's been keyed up in a 500 grit just to take the edges off. Um, yeah, and the rest of it's been marked up. This will be a nice flat black then the last bits, which are the plastic. So we've got the front grill and the bumper end caps. And we're gonna spray that with an adhesion promoter first, like you should do with all plastics when you're painting. And then we'll lay the Raptor on. Now, the reason we've gone for different stages is because all of this black will have a different texture. So the front bumper is gonna go for that real gnarly uh, textured finish, the sort of stuff that you might be put, you know, on a military style vehicle, for example. The top of the bus front, that's gonna be a smooth satin type finish. And then these plastic parts are gonna have almost the factory finish. So where we've keyed up this plastic and sanded it down with the 180, then the 240, we've lost some of the factory dimpled finish. So we're gonna recreate that. So all of these parts, all in black, all with different textures. I can't wait to show you. Let's go on with it. Before we start painting the black then, we just want to have a quick chat about 
what we're using and the process we're gonna go about it. As with the bread, we're gonna be laying down a thinned flat coat. First. Yes. Is that right? Yep. And then we're gonna be using the texture gun. So what sort of ratios we're gonna use and how do we go about doing it? So again, the Raptor itself is three to one. So always three parts Raptor, one part hardener. But what we're gonna do with those two when they're mixed, we're gonna dilute it. Yeah. So we're gonna put some automotive thinners, acrylic thinners, in with the Raptor. You can go anything from 5% to 20%, depending on the gun setup and how thin you want the paint. We're gonna use about 15%. We're gonna go through a 1.6 standard HVLP spray gun, or RP in this case. Um, and that's gonna lay a nice flat coat down for us. On one of the objects, we want it flat, but for the rest of them, it's just to get a bit of coverage on there before we start to put a texture on. So again, just a cap, Raptor is three to one. Three parts Raptor, one part hardener. We're gonna dilute it to make the actual viscosity or the, thick, the, the, the mixture thinner, yeah. so it lays down flatter, and we can put it through a standard spray gun. Once that's on there, and we've allowed it to flash off or for about half an hour, so it cures up nicely, we're then gonna think about the textures that we want. So we're gonna play with two different textures today. Yeah. We're gonna leave the flat one flat. Two different textures are, we're still gonna use this gun. But with this gun, we're gonna change the air pressure. And we're gonna increase the air pressure, but stand further away from the object. And what that does is it, it, it atomizes a finer mist. And because you're further away, that mist separates itself. So it's not so much a wet fan. And that just drops lovely on top of your semi-cured raptor that you've got. And it creates a plastic texture similar to OEM. Yeah, we want to try and replicate the original exactly stippled surface, yeah. And, and the benefit of using Raptor over a textured can, an aerosol can, is it is 2K. It's fully uh, resistant to chemicals and to salt yeah. and to you know abrasive chips and scratches, but also it's UV compliant. So with single pack 1K aerosol cans that you may get, they'll go grey over time yeah. because the UV will yeah, just break it down. Yeah, yeah. So this will stay nice and black and clean. There's a benefit there to use it. Then we're gonna move on to the bumper, the metal bumper. You're gonna want your big protection from that. So we're gonna move on to the standard shut gun. Yeah. The six mil bore. We're gonna run that at around about four bar air pressure. And it's gonna give a nice, chunky, um, gnarly texture. It'll look pretty. It won't, it, you know, I can make it look pretty, but it won't look like it's just a mess. Yeah. Your eyes will see, the camera will see, and we're gonna put two coats of that on, and that will give you around about 350 to 400 microns, which is a big paint film, yeah. and that will really protect against that stone chip, that abrasive, you know, the hardware, it's gonna, gonna look. And for me, then you're gonna have three or four different textures yeah. on that front end. So we'll be able to showcase everything, but um, if you're doing it at home, then yeah, you can use those textures. Yeah, you can use those textures. Um, We've already discussed that you know we've got aerosol cans as well. We have the aerosol can in the black 2K as well as the primer 2K. So you don't always need to have your spray guns. Yeah. You, know, you can do exactly the same job as we're doing here, pretty much with spray cans. Perfect. Okay. So for those at home who maybe don't have this facility, um, you can still achieve a really nice chunky texture from the shoots gun. You don't have to lay that flat. No, you don't have to. Lay but that because flat we've got the facilities and yep. you know the guns and everything to do it we're going to do it just to get that full effect but yep. um i've used raptor in the past and used similar guns and yeah got that nice big fat texture in the past but just can't wait to to show you what it's going to look like when it's finished so three different textures the flat the stippled and the armor type texture um i guess let's smash on with it let's go sweet
check it out. That has achieved exactly everything we're after today. We've now got a freshly painted uh, marketing display piece and it's used all of the Raptor textures that we wanted to. So we've got the really tough textured finish right at the bottom. We've then got the medium texture for all of the bodywork in the flame red. The plastics, end caps and the grill have got the light texture on which is to replicate factory plastics. And then right on the top there, the shelf, that's gone for the satin smooth finish. And I couldn't be happier. And I know the guys at Raptor are very happy with what we've managed to achieve in the last day and a half as well. And that has rounded off an awesome couple of days at Upole Raptor um, training facility. So thank you so much for having us over. And it's no secret that we've been brought up here by Raptor to have the training, showcase the product, basically to show you guys and make a video. And it's the start of a relationship that's only gonna grow. Hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. And basically Jason and the team at Raptor started the journey um, of Raptor coatings with the 4x4 market, right? And we had um, a small involvement of that five years ago and I'll be putting some posts on our Instagram or you can go all the way back five years on our Instagram where we helped build a Land Rover um, that was painted here. Um, but you've seen in the camper van market, or well, there's a use for this product in the camper van market and we've showcased that just on that bus front we've got. And it's the reason we wanted to get involved as well because our videos are aimed at people who want to do this at home and Raptor itself has got that facility to be able to achieve a good finish at home isn't it really um so what else is it you wanted to see the sort of products used on in camper vans because i can see it on exterior products maybe even interior renovations all sorts of stuff yeah i agree um certainly exterior um items that we that we showcased today and yesterday yeah um it just brings things back to life at the same time giving it a really really rugged tough finish mm -hmm. um You've already touched on it, how easy it is to use. You know, we're showcasing today in an ideal situation in a spray booth. Yeah. Um, it can be sprayed. You don't need to be a high-end professional to get the finish that you want. Mm -hmm. As long as you um, abide by the health and safety regulations that are on the cans, etc., you're fine. And then we also step it down a little bit so you can have the same product in aerosol cans. Yeah, and you can't have the wait same to product, use those. Yeah, that you can <laughs> that you can roll. And you get some great finishes from those. So it is really aimed at we, we, we kind of like Brack the Weekend Warrior maybe, you know, who's really, really enthusiastic about his vehicle. He could get a great finish from it and protect, or well, you can take it into a body shop who is skilled at what they do sure. and they can get some fantastic finishes. Yeah. I mean, we've got some really good um, customizers on board throughout the UK that have done some fantastic builds. Um, other areas where Raptor's really good, it's because of its protective nature um, against um, salt, chemicals, corrosion, uh -huh. abrasion, um, is underbody. Okay. So if you're going to, if you're stripping your vehicle right the way back down again, if you're doing a complete conversion, you know, when you start, when you, once you epoxy your floor pan, wraps is a really good substitute underneath there for stone chip. And you can color it, the, the color of your vehicle. So you can match your vehicle from the underneath up. Yeah. And the beauty of the Raptor as well is you can paint on top of. So if you want that high mm -hmm. gloss finish, mm -hmm. yeah. etc., you can get that. Um, so underbody is really good. Interior, inside, inner wings. You know, your high corrosion areas, if you've already treated that, brought it back, done the rust conversion, um, put your epoxy primer on, a nice coat or two of Raptor on there is really gonna stop that rust, you know, that water penetrating back through yeah. and creating the rust. And then you've got your nice finishes. Sure. You know, what we've done there is we've re recreated a factory finish on plastics. Yeah. You know, by watching our videos online, you can get, with limited skill level, that kind of finish. You know, at a minimum cost. You know, you're not using you're not using a lot of material. Raptor itself goes a long way. Mm. You know, a liter of Raptor, for example, will do a, a T3 or a T4 or a T5 bumper. You know, maybe the wheels and the rear front front and rears. Yeah. You know, it goes a long, long way. Um, dashboards. Yeah, we've vinyl done that as well. Vinyl dashboards, vinyl door cards. Vinyl door cards. And we're going to be covering all of this as well. I've just thought of something that it might be good for. Um, now you were talking about. Uh, potentially moving into marine industry as well. Is yeah, that we right? have, so we have a marine brochure out. We're, we're, we're breaking the boundaries down for that. Polyurethanes lend themselves really well to composite mm -hmm. fiberglass and gel. Well, that was going to be my next thing. So, if you're 
uh, fiberglass roof on your camper van or your pop top needs a bit of a you know rejuvenation restoration you can get the white raptor for example use the roller kit mm -hmm. you don't need a spray booth mm -hmm. you can do it under a tarp you could do it in the back garden or whatever you wanted to do and there you go you've got your restoration exactly. kit right there and in fact we'll give out the um, social media handles at the end but if you follow our official um, Instagram and mm -hmm. Facebook you will see numerous tops like that being done, camper van tops that Brilliant. are in them gel coats or them fiberglass yeah. finishes. And it does, it brings it back to life. It covers up a, multiple, a multitude of sins, yeah. it strains it all out, protects. The good thing about um, Raptor as well, whether it's black, white, or you tint it, is it's UV protection. Perfect. So it will not gray, your blacks won't go gray, your uh, reds will not chalk and go pink. Uh, you know, the UV stability that's built in there is exactly the same as we put into our clear coat systems up here, which yeah. is a professional end user. So that's a really, really good plus point. Perfect, and the, like you say, the applications are endless. Um, we're going to have a bunch of these booklets, so if you want to learn more about the King of Tough Raptor, everything you need to know is in here. I mean, the detail goes over and above what we've covered today, but the main point we wanted to get across is, yes, we've done, it, we've, we've coated our bus front in an ideal situation yep. and it's to showcase the different applications but it's I mean if I can do it I'm sure anybody at home can do it because I've covered dashboards I've done uh, vinyl door cards we've done a bit of fiberglass a bit of metal work everything and I've even painted a whole wagon in it overnight almost we didn't cover it but what's coming up is um, we are going to be painting a whole vehicle in uh, Raptor paint very soon so I look forward to that and we're going to do it all in our own workshop um, I'm going to be restoring a pop top with um, the Raptor now we've just spoken about it I've got my own pop top that I need to restore that's really bad condition so we'll do the fiberglass repairs on that and we'll paint that as well um, but yeah wheel restoration bumpers yeah. plastics all that sort of stuff Same. alloy I, wheels alloy wheels are another great one yeah you know, it's that, great that satin matte or that yeah satin black matte black look and so with the facilities well obviously the, the stuff in the bottle it helps you if you have a compressor and then you can get the gun or any Schutz gun but the fact that it's now going to be coming out in a tin as well a 2k tin that's brilliant so I mean to round up I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen we are going to be making this available on our website you will be able to buy this product directly from us there will be a link in the description and to end thank you for having us up here thank you for training us and thank you for showcasing the product and painting our gear for us as That's well right. it's going to be awesome we are going to be having that display stand at all of the shows we are going to be going to for the foreseeable future the first of them being the campus and coffee events that we are holding um and the first campus and coffee you're coming to i'll be there yes so, yeah, so um, if this video is out after the first campus and coffee um we'll show some footage of that or we'll have a video of that event um as a as a link in the description too so once again thank you very much if there's anything else anybody wants to know, where can we find you? Or where yeah. can we find your Instagram account, for So you example? can find our Instagram account, which is richesraptor.official.uk. Brilliant. And our Facebook account is Raptor Coatings. Perfect, and that's really good. If you if you follow the hashtag Raptor or uh, hashtag King of Tough. Hashtag King of Tough. There is some brilliant examples of people painting vehicles. And even if I just have a quick look here, Oh gosh, I'm going to try and find the page now. I should have prepared this, shouldn't I? There is Porsches, Jeeps, Land Rovers, Audis, Humvees, all painted in Raptor. So there's some really good examples out there. But um, thank you for the to the team for coming up and filming and showing us everything. And thanks once again to you, Jason, for, for Build hosting dream, us. Isn't it? Yes. Build your dream. That's what we Excellent. say. Brilliant. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Cheers, and, later. Uh, we shall sign off and go ahead go get painting it's really really good stuff <laughs>